Hello, my name is Loji, and today I'm going to be doing a deep dive into all of the information you need to know to understand what I'm doing in this short. I do this every day, and it has massively helped me connect chords and melodies around the fretboard. Pick a key, how about the key of A, run every chord in that key with a simple chord shape. I like using these, one, five, three shapes. So one chord, two chord, three chord, four, five, six, seven, one, or any other location that you want. Run the major scale of the key, so A major, land on a note, and then play the chord that that note lives in. So how about this? Seven of the key lives inside the five chord right there. Four chord, three chord, six chord. Once you do this, your brain and your ears will start to notice the connections between the notes and the chords. You can start experimenting. understand and recreate in your own way everything that I just did in that video, you need to know two things. Number one, you need to be able to play a major scale horizontally on the fretboard, or at least mostly horizontally. So for example, if I say play the key of C and you say, okay, and you do this shape, that will not help you in this particular exercise because you need to be able to navigate through that scale or through that key horizontally. Because remember, the notes of this scale that we are playing are the melody notes of our chords. And we're not going to be playing all these chords in one location. Not to mention, all of the, the notes we want to play should be in a higher register too. So not down here. We want to use these notes as melodies. So the first thing you want to do, be able to play this scale on one string. If you've never done that before, I highly recommend that you do that. I'm going to do this in the key of C just to demonstrate. It should be pretty easy, but it's something you need to memorize. Here's C, the starting note. Okay, What is my major scale? So I know the key of C is just all natural notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. I'm just going to run those. And notice the distances between them all. C to D, two frets. D to E, two frets. E to F, one fret. F to G, two frets. G to A, two frets. A to B, two frets. B to C, one fret. Okay, this is extremely rudimentary stuff. I'd imagine many people know this, but in case you don't, absolutely mandatory that you understand what I'm doing here. So another thing to notice is some of those notes have half steps and some of those notes are whole steps. A whole step being two frets, a half step being one fret. So now thinking about this, it is very important for us to not just think about a scale as letters, C, D, E, F, G, so on and so forth, but to think about them as their number designations in the key. What do I mean by that? Very simply. The first note of this scale is C. So instead of calling this C only, I'm going to also call it one because that's the starting note of the key. This note D is the second note of the key. I'm not just gonna call it D, I'm going to call it two. So if I go through all of that and not call them letters, but call them their number designations, something interesting happens. You'll notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one. You can call this eight, by the way. That's where the term octave comes from, oct as in eight. But I'll just call it one because it's the same as this. You'll notice, oh, some of those distances are two frets. Some of them are one, right? You'll notice three to four was only one fret. And then seven to one up top was also only one fret, whereas the rest of them were two frets. Well, guess what? That is how every single scale, major scale, also known as notes in the key, that's how they all work, okay? They're always going to be that. And this is why thinking about them as numbers is on the guitar, I would personally say, some would disagree, but I would personally say thinking about them as numbers and not only the letters is more valuable for this reason. If I play one, two, three, starting on C right here, right? Just simple C, D, E. Look at this distance, okay? It's like a note up two frets to the next, up two frets to the next. This is one, two, three. How about just one to three, right? It's like up one, two, three, four frets, right? This is the distance between one to three or two to three or one to two or one to four if I can reach it or three to four. I'm looking at all of these individual distances and calling them as numbers. This is why thinking about them as numbers is a bit more valuable in my opinion. This is C, D, E, one, two, three. But watch what happens when I move to a different key. I'm going to play right here. This is the first fret of the G string. That note is A flat. 
Okay, what are the first three notes of A flat? It would be A flat, B flat, and C, right? That is A flats, one, two, three. Well, guess what? The shape is identical as it was for the key of C. The key of C, one, two, three, C, D, E. The key of A flat, one, two, three, A flat, B flat, C. In fact, this exact shape is always the starting notes, first, second, and third. So if this is my key, don't even care what this is. This is its one, two, and three, first three notes of the major scale. If this is my key, don't care what note this is, this is one, two, three. On the guitar, there are shapes for every interval distance. So if you memorize them all, you will always have access to those notes in the key, regardless of if you know the letters or not. This is why guitar players have such an easy time playing in every key, because we don't necessarily need to have the numbers perfectly, excuse me, the letters perfectly in our minds at any moment, because we can rely on these distances. Obviously, you want to know what the letters are at the same time because that kind of grounds you on the fretboard and grounds you in the key and in the music you're playing. But the interval distances and the number designations allow you to access these notes very quickly regardless of key because there is no such thing as a difficult key to play on guitar because all you have to do is know where to start, know where your home base root is, and then know where all of the other notes around that are by memorizing these distances. Okay. Super, super core element of the guitar. You must think about it like this. It's not the same as piano. Let's say if you're playing in the key of C and piano, it feels a certain way. But then if you play in the key of B on piano, it feels totally different. Not the case on guitar. If I play one, two, three, four, five key of C, it looks like this. This is one way to play it, right? Cool. If I want to play the key of B, I do the same thing back about an inch, also known as one fret, the same thing. Even though the notes are totally different. This is C, D, E, F, G. If I start on B, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, wildly different notes, but the form and the shape and the numbers are the same. Okay. That is not where the strength of the guitar is to memorize the letters. In reality, the strength of the guitar, in my opinion, is to memorize all of the different ways to play those particular distances. For example, if I start right here, I know one, two, three is this, but it's also this or this or this or in a different position or this or this, whatever, all those different ways to play it. That's really how you unlock navigating the fretboard because you're looking at all of the different possible permutations to play the same thing. This is how the guitar works. I promise you. Not really going to get, even though I've talked about it quite a bit already in this video, I'm not going to get further into it. If you are interested in this methodology, feel free to check out my Patreon in the description because my entire guitar method is based on thinking about the fretboard like this. The second thing that you must know to understand what I'm doing in this short is to understand not just the notes in a key, but the chords that go along with those notes. There are seven notes in a key and there's one chord, basic chord type for every note, which means there are seven basic foundational chords in a key. I'm not going to go over how to find what these are. It's too much of a process for this video, but if you would like, check the first comment in the comment section for a Patreon exclusive lesson that I talk about this exact thing, why the chords are what they are. I also have a fairly uh, significant beard in that video. So I have a kind of a caveman style. So I hope that doesn't offend you. So just to put it really simply, let's go over what these chords would be in the key of C, for example. Even though I'm doing this in the key of C, the order that we are about to go over is the same for every key. So do not forget that. Okay, key of C. Our first note is C. If we were to build a chord off of C, the starting note of that key, it would be simply C major. So I'm going to play a basic major chord right here. If we were to go to the two of the key, C, D, and we built a chord off of that, it would be D minor. Now we're saying, why would it not be D major? To put it simply, because if we're playing D major, D major has an F sharp in it. That note is not in the key of C. We need to stay in the key of C, so this note will be an F natural, turning the chord into a minor chord. Okay? The third of the key is C, D, E. This chord will also be minor. Side note, this chord is often major as well, but the minor version is the one that is in the key. Okay, what about the fourth note, C, D, E, F? That chord will be major, F major. How about the fifth, C, D, E, F, G? Five chords are also major, G major. How about the sixth, 
C, D, E, F, G, A is the sixth chord. Six chords are notoriously minor. This is the most important minor chord of a key. This is basically how you sound like you're playing in a minor key for a separate video. How about the seven? C, D, E, F, G, A, B would be diminished. It's kind of an oddball chord. Not terribly common, but that is what it is. So the order of the chords in the key, in the key of C, I'll say, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and then C. Just like the scale, however, we need to look at those chords as not the letters, but the corresponding numbers. So what would that be? The one chord in the key is major, the two is minor, the three is minor, the four is major, the five is major, the six is minor, the seven is diminished. Okay, so when I say the two chord, what I mean is the chord built off of the second note of that key and it's traditionally minor. If I say the four chord, what I mean is the chord built off of the four of that key and it's traditionally major. This is always the same for every key. Okay, it is so important to understand that I'm doing this in the key of C, but if I were to do this in the key of B flat or the key of G, the order is the same. Every key's chord, or excuse me, every key's one chord is major, two chord is minor, three chord is minor, four is major, five is major, six is minor, seven is diminished. This might be an aggressive opinion, but it needs to be said. If you are hearing everything that I'm talking about, and your natural instinct is to think, man, all this music theory nerd stuff, it's all bullshit. I don't need to know all that. I'll just play with feel and with my intuition. I am telling you right now, you are making a catastrophic mistake that will haunt you for the rest of your life. How do I know that? Because I've met many people that do that exact thing and then they come to me 20 years later and they don't understand all of these things that they should have understood within year one, which then forces them to be confused at basically everything that they come across. The reason why what we are talking about is A, not difficult in the slightest once you actually put the work in, but B, most importantly, it is the foundation of basically every single piece of music that you have ever heard in your life and has been for 400 years. So if you are making the active decision to not learn what is basically the foundation of everything you've ever heard, you are sabotaging your ability to learn things in the future. You're going to see someone and say, why did they use those chords to write that song? Or how is someone able to kind of freely improvise with different chords? Or maybe you're going to see a video like my short and you're going to say, how is that possible? I don't know what's going on. And if that's the case, then that means you haven't learned one of the most rudimentary and fundamental aspects of music. And that is chords in the key. Please, I promise you, if you put the time in and learn this, you will be ever grateful that you did. So knowing the chords in the key, we now need to get some shapes that we can use to kind of move around the fretboard because we don't want to just play these open chords all the time. So the classic shapes that people will play are, of course, your standard bar chords, right? If I do this all in the key of C, you can clearly see what it would be. Here's my C chord, my starting chord, just basic C chord. The one chord, right? Notice it's major because one chords are major. If I go to two, one, two, how did I know that was two? Because this is always the distance between one and two. One, two, three, there's that little chord that we discovered earlier. One to two, I know this is a two chord. Two chords are minor, as we just talked about. So I play the minor bar chord shape, right? Which you probably know. I'm gonna go to three, where is that? One, two, three. E in this case, it's also minor. Okay, I'm gonna go to four. One, two, three, four, that's major. Four, five, major. 5, 6, minor, and then 6, 7, diminished, and then we're back to 1. Now, those are cool. I personally do not like to use those shapes for a variety of reasons, but the most practical reason is they only look like that on this set of four strings. If you break them apart, however, you can actually find some shapes that are copy and pasteable to other strings. For example... If I just play this shape, this is the shape I'm using in the video, and I describe it as a 1-5-3 shape, because every time you play this shape, you're playing this chords 1, 5, and 3. Okay, so this is C, right? C is 1. This is its 5. How do I know? Because that note is G. What is C's 5? C, D, E, F, G, right? This is C's 3. How do I know? What note is that? It's E. What is C's third? C, D, E. So this is C's 1, 
five and three. But guess what? Because the guitar is based on these interval distances that never change, I can move this around and it's always this notes, one, five, three, always. doesn't matter where I play it. Now remember though, I need to modify the shape to make it minor when it should be minor. So how do I do that? If this is my major chord, that's my three on top. If I want to make it minor, that note needs to move back a fret because we are flatting the third. That's how you create a minor chord. So instead of one, five, three, one five middle finger over here just back a fret flat three so for the minor chords of the key i will use this one and for the major chords of the key i will use this one and then for the diminished i will take both of these and flat both of them because that's what diminished is a one flat five and flat three so check it out c major one five three i'm gonna go to two here's two but it's not major it's minor so i need to play this minor shape one five flat three Still one, five, three. The order has not changed. The root has changed, but the order is the same. How about the three chord? Two, three, right? Just like our major scale. That's how we're finding these chord locations. Minor, right? Four, F major, back to our major shape. Five, major, still major. Six, back to our minor shape. Getting kind of crammed up here. Seven looks like this. It's the only one that's different. And then major. So like I said, I'm kind of getting crammed as I do that on one string. So instead of doing it on one string, I know that I can take these shapes and do them on the D string. Watch this. Instead of one, two, three, I can play this chord here. How did I know that? Because this note is C, D, E, right? The third of the key. Well, I know there's also E right here. This also tells me that this is one, two, three, and so is this. Different way to play it, right? So because that's three, the same note as this, I can take literally the same shape and play right here. That's why I like these, because if you did that with the full bar chord, it doesn't work. You can't just take the shape, move it to the D string, and expect it to work, because the tuning of the guitar prevents you from doing that. It would look like this, slightly different. But if you choose to play these smaller shapes, they actually look the same. This is major on the A string. This is also the straight up major on the D string. D string, G string, high E string. By the way, I'm, I don't know if you can see my right hand that much, but I'm usually picking these with pick, middle, ring. So if you see my, my picking hand, pick, middle, ring is how I'm mostly doing these. Of course, you can just strum them. You just have to make sure you're muting the notes around because this is only a three note chord, one, five, and three. So because of that, I now have a variety of ways to play these. I can play one, two, three, or I can play one, two, three. And if this is three, guess where four is? up a half step major, just like it was here, up a half step major, just doing it now on the D string. This is nice because I can kind of stay in one area. I'm not forced to go all the way up here, which is kind of annoying. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice four, five were major. Six was minor because it is in the key. Seven is diminished. And then one. Now that I've got all of those chords, I'm going to start experimenting by adding in those notes from the melody and noticing when those notes line up with a particular chord. I'm going to simply do this visually. I'm not really thinking about any fancy stuff, just visually doing it. Watch this. Here's my scale, one string. See this note right here? I can visually see that that is the top note of this chord, a one chord, C major. So I know I can do that. One, two, three, play the chord. I also see this note right here is the top note of this chord. What is that? That's the seven chord, right? One, go backwards, seven. So I can make that choice. How about this? One, two, three, the four of the key. I see that note as the top of this chord, the two chord. It's just literally, I see it visually, just the top of the chord. I see this note and say, oh, look at that. The chord is right here. There it is. Now notice my fingering kind of has to be prepared to do that because if I do this and I'm on my pinky, I'm not really in the position to play the chord. I, I kind of need to be on my middle finger. So I will do that. Keep it simple. Or I could, of course, use a different fingering. I could go, that's the same chord as this, right? Just, that's a side note. We don't have to talk about that shape. But that's what I would do. One string, right? Just move up. Take a note of what chord would be in the position where that note on top is the third of the chord. And you play it, right? I can see this note right here is the top note of this chord. I see this note right here is the top note of this chord. And then if you want to back it up with the information, like I discuss in the video, I say something like this in the video. I say the seventh of the key, which is where one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the third of the five chord. What do I mean by that? This note is the third of this chord. What chord is this? One, two, three, four, five. That's what I mean. How do I know it's the third? Because the shapes I'm playing are always one, five, three. This is always the third of this chord. And this note B is also the seventh of the key. And this is another valuable thing about the numbers. 
This never changes for every key. Every key's seventh of the key is always going to be the third of that key's five chord. Again, it's a lot of number jargon. If you're not used to it, you just have to get comfortable with it. But when you do understand what it is, you realize how simple this stuff actually is and how it's perfectly copy and pasteable to every key that you ever play in. You can mess around kind of however you want. So yeah, and that's, that's basically what I'm doing. That's the simplest way to approach it. Now you can expand on this by playing notes that are not always the same note of that chord. You'll notice as I do this, the note I end on is always the third because I'm choosing to end on the top note and the, the top note of this chord is always three. Now I could also do this, maybe something like this. Right? This is a different chord shape altogether where the top note is not the third of the chord. It's the fifth of the chord. So that's for a separate video. I would honestly just keep it simple with just these simple shapes so you can get an ear for it. But you can start experimenting. You can look at a note and say, this is the third of the key. I see that is the third of this chord. But I also see that is the seventh of this chord. Right? I see that is the root of this or the root of this. Slightly out of key. Um, I see that as the sixth of this. I see that as the fifth of this. I mean, you can get out of the key if you wanted to. You can say, I see that as the flat seven of this. I see that as the sharp four of that, sharp five of this, right? I see that as the, I don't know, uh, the, excuse me, fifth of this out of key. And you can kind of mess around with that. Watch this, like, I'll do something simple. One, two, three. Again out of the key, but it doesn't sound that wild because I'm using this note as a lifeline between those two chords that are not related. It's a very common sound. It's called common tone modulation is the technical term. That's really cool. You can kind of do this however you want. Just look at the note visually and line it up with that particular chord. So yeah, I can get more into the details of what I'm doing, but that's basically what's happening. I'm just thinking about the chords and the key thinking about the, the actual key, notes in the key, and just lining them up, looking for opportunities visually or knowing that, okay, the third of the key is always gonna be the blank of this, and you move through like that. Super valuable, like it's super valuable, it's super easy to do once you get comfortable, you just have to kind of get used to this type of thought process. And one last thing, I often say, and you'll hear me say in a lot of my videos, like one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord. I've had a lot of people say, I don't know what you're talking about, like I mentioned earlier, I highly recommend you learn this stuff because if you're in the playing world, like the professional playing world, everyone talks like this, at least all the people that I've met. They talk like this so much to the point where I'll play in bands where we're kind of doing like an improv thing. And let's say the keyboard player is kind of taking the lead. The keyboard player will literally go like this. He'll flash chords, meaning if he goes like this, he, that means, hey, we're about to play the two chord of the key and then everyone does it. Or if he goes like this, we're about to play the four chord of the key and then everyone does it. So this is not like a super you know, strange, like rare, nerdy way to think about it. This is how professionals do it. And I'm telling you, it makes it so much easier if you approach it like this, because everything is uniform and allow you to understand why things sound the way they do, all that good stuff. So hopefully all this stuff makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. See you in the next one.